Okay, today we're going to start learning about trig graphs. So trig graphs can be used for an awful lot of different things. We have lots of things that are measured in circular measurements, so things like wheels going around, we have <coughs> excuse me, the world being a circle, a sphere, the moon, um, so we have tides, we have weather, lots of things are cyclic in their repetition. So we can use trig graphs to represent this. We're actually only going to use the sine and the cosine graph. So we would write these as y equals sine x and y equals cosine x. These are the two we're going to use. This particular um, achievement standard is two halves, and we're only going to learn the one half, which is all about the trig graphs. We'll learn a little bit of the other half maybe later in the year. Okay, so we've got these two. Now, we can dress these up into a really fancy formula, but we're just going to start with finding what we call A. So, A equals amplitude. Not attitude, amplitude. <laughs> okay, amplitude means the, the horizontal, no, vertical stretch of the graph. So, we're going to call it a multiplier because that's where it sits, out the front of the equation. It goes and stretches the gap graph. Okay? So let's have a look at an example. We're just going to pick sine. If we've got y equals 2 sine x, that's our a. That's where it lives. Okay? So the two formulas, we've got a y equals a sine x and y equals b a cos x. Those are our two. So here's our a, it's two. <coughs> and so our sine graph from the other day, we had it, it looks like this, up and down, like that, to two pi, our new radian measurement, pi in the middle, same as 180 degrees, one is the top value, negative one is the bottom value. We're going to double it in height from the x-axis. So this point here is now going to be at 2. This point here is now going to be at negative 2. This point here is at 0. So it, double or 0 is 0, so it doesn't move. So we're going to go up to this one, back down to here, down to this one, and back up to here. And it doesn't stop, guys. It keeps going on and on and on, round and round and round and round. It's a cyclic movement. We're only going to draw that much for now, though. So that's what y equals 2 sine x looks like. Sometimes a can be negative. What do you think an a being negative will do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turns it upside down. Right, so the whole graph reflects in the x-axis. So if we look at another one, e.g. y equals negative cosine x. What multiplier is that? Negative 1. Good. Gosh, you guys are doing well. All right, negative 1. So that means that we're not changing the height of it, we're just reflecting in the axis. So if we have a look, we've got the cosine graph goes between 1 and negative 1 pi and 2 pi, starts up here like a C, whoops, and goes down and up. All right? So that's what the C for a cosine is for a sine graph. Okay? So we need to turn it upside down. That's not particularly difficult to do. So we're going to start down here and we're going to go like that. Beautiful. And remember, it carries on. So it shouldn't stop there. It should keep going that way and actually it should have the turning point on that point. So that should be the lowest point. So that's the amplitude. The other one we're going to deal with today is D. D is our vertical movement. I know it doesn't start with a D, but that's what it is. Vertical movement. That means we're moving up and down. All right? Up for positives and down for negatives. All right, so where is it found? On our equations for this one, we've got Y equals sine X plus d, or y equals si, uh, cosine x plus d. Right, let's have a look at another example. So y equals sine x 
minus 1. Minus 1 means we go down. So, we take our original graph. 1, negative 1, 5, 2, 5, sine, up, down, like that. And we pull the whole thing, grab it all, pull it down one square. So this is now going to be here, 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 here. So I'm going to try and hit those dots. And you'll see that it should be evenly spaced all the way through. Okay, and it continues. So it goes up again, and this one goes down again. Doesn't stop. Okay, so those are the two we're going to learn today, but we also need to learn how to find the equation if we're given the graph. So, we need to be able to show the working that's expected in the standard to show evidence. So the graph will normally be drawn for us. Just trying to make it as tidy as possible. So we're going to go like that. There we go. That's the graph we're working on. Three, two, one, negative one, negative two, negative three. Right. So we need to show the evidence of what we're finding. To find A, we use a formula. A equals the maximum value on the graph minus the minimum value on the graph divided by 2. Okay? So in this case, the maximum value is at 3, the minimum value is at 0 over 2, our A is 1 and a half. 1.5. Alright? Then we have to move on to figuring out whether it's gone up or down. To do that, we find halfway in the graph, so that 1 and a half value there, right? Halfway through the graph, and we want to know where that's moved to. So we find V, a D, the vertical movement, by the maximum minus A. So 3 minus 1 and a half equals 1 and a half. That's the middle of the graph. That goes 1 and a half up and 1 and a half down. Don't be fooled into thinking that A is 3 because it goes from 3 to 0. It's from the middle of the graph to the top and the bottom. So now we've got them, we take our equation. What kind of graph is it? Starts and looks sort of like a C. It's a cosine graph. So y equals something, cosine x. All right? The a goes in front. So the a is one and a half. And the d is also one and a half in this particular case. All right? So that's finding the equation. If we wanted to do both of these together and draw a graph, we can do that too. Let's just have a quick look at what um, y equals negative 2 cosine x plus 1 might look like. Okay? The best way to do this is to draw, first draw the plane graph, so the cos graph, and the cos graph starts at 1, goes to negative 1, and so it goes like this, alright, 2 pi and pi, and then the next thing to do is to change the negative 2, so the negative 2 means that it's upside down twice as big, so it's gone down to here and up to here, so it's looking like this much more stretched out, down to 2, negative 2 and 2. And then it says that all together we need to move the whole red dotty graph up 1. So to move it up 1, we go up to here, starting up to here, up to here, down to here, down to here. So we're going to get this as our final product. Alright, so one piece at a time, adding it all on, and you'll end up doing it beautifully. Okay, 
So work for you today.